Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Join us every weekday at this time to discuss news, spend time in the Word, and receive answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, Kathy, uh, today's uh, Tuesday. We started this week uh, talking about a little bit about the chaotic world, and uh, mm-hmm. uh, but we really got into the abiding uh, of it. And um, Kathy and I both, uh, actually this last weekend, mm-hmm. uh, uh, separately, Dan and Kathy and Linda and I in separate groups, uh, led what we call an abiding in the vine slash unity retreat where we uh, take people into what does it look like to abide uh, and then how do you go to unity with your spouse to uh, make decisions and uh, one of the things by the way about unity uh, is it's not about unity just agreeing together and negotiating together it's agreement with God right uh, and holding that process until you see what God sees uh, so it's really mm-hmm. a, a beautiful thing and we're, we're going to get into that uh, aspect of things uh, as we uh, go down the road here with some new material and uh, sharing with you. But um, I know you've been doing it, uh, Kathy, for four years. Linda and I have been doing it now 20 years. Uh, when we started, uh, you know, Linda and I shared, we started at that retreat in uh, the castle in Austria. Mm-hmm. Um, and now we've got 24 leaders around the country and around the world uh, doing these. When you do this, what what hits you the most about uh, – experiencing others uh, coming alive with the abiding mm. process? What what strikes you the most wow. about that? You know, probably, oh, there's so many yeah. things, honestly. <laughs> um, it, it really is, it's hard. This is one of the biggest privileges possible to be able to give this away and just to see people suddenly see, you know, that word that said, you know, there's a verse in Hebrews that talks about the word is alive and active. And so few people have truly experienced that. And so to see people experience that for the first time, I think that's, that's a huge thing. Um, I think even just this last weekend, you know, one of the, the people, couples that was there, the husband looks, he's like, what I'm hearing is this, this unity thing, this is a big deal. (laughs) (laughs) It's a big deal. It's a big deal, but it really, it's, it's such a sweet thing to see it come alive and then begin to see the beauty of the gift that God has given us in his word. I think that's what it is, is I think, I don't know how to describe it, but we don't even realize the depth and the the beauty of what he has gifted us with to be able to navigate life, to be able to know him, to be able to live truly the abundant life, to, to step into what he has for us. And I don't mean it has to be abundant with, you know, the way that the world views abundant. I mean, abundant in joy, abundant in peace, abundant in freedom. And and when you start to see that happen and the light bulbs going on for people that this is not this dry rule driven life, it's this, this place where God reaches in and meets you and, um, and wants to restore you to what he originally created you to be. Yeah. Uh, it's, you uh... know, it's remarkable, uh, and that's what always thrills us, you know, even after 20 years, is that uh, almost everybody coming to a retreat um, has never experienced this. Mm-hmm. Uh, so their attitude toward the Bible and toward God is, well, he's out there, uh, probably mm-hmm. not very happy with me, because uh, you tend to feel a little bit guilty, or you're struggling in life, or you wonder how, right. co- how come, how come, how come. Or I'm too little for him to be concerned. Yeah, with. yeah. And my I'm stuff, a, my yeah. stuff isn't that important. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, and they've never understood what it meant to abide and to hear and uh, and to walk, because uh, they think it's 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 uh, been taught that it's theology book. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll learn the theology of it and then try to perform to that theology as best right. you can, including knowing that you'll probably struggle and fail, but hey, you get to go to heaven. Um, Mm -hmm. and so what happens in a retreat is that, uh, people come, uh, with that, uh, that's how I've approached it. Mm -hmm. And then they experience, uh, the personal and you, and you said it, see, it's God's heart 
of I have such wonderful things for you and I want to mm-hmm. do I want to do wonderful things in you and through you and around you that mm-hmm. he meets you said he you said it he meets you at the moment what is necessary for you to start walking in the beauty and the freedom of that right and so he right. puts he puts his finger on something and said well here's what I'm I'm saying to you about uh, an issue in your life that mm-hmm. if you follow this and experience it, and you use the word mm-hmm. no, uh, yada, uh, mm-hmm. you will uh, begin to uh, see the beauty of my walk for you. And and he says, I care so much about you right. that I'm going to speak personally to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a uh, we did a retreat. This is a couple years ago, several years ago, um, and we had a couple that were um, pretty rigid. And skeptical, highly skeptical. Right. Uh, and so uh, typically the wife was resisting the teaching pretty much like, yeah, nah, mm-hmm. nah, you know. Um, uh, and then uh, on Saturday we get into this discussion about unity. Mm-hmm. Um, and I make a comment, uh, usually at all the retreats, is um, a lot of couples live their life with we agree to disagree. Yeah. Uh, and I said, um, that isn't really the way that God has it because he will get you that answer 100% mm-hmm. of the time, all the time. And he doesn't say for you to accept that we agree to disagree, but rather to go to unity with him. Right. And this In lady, fact, go ahead. I'm going to, I remember the first retreat we went to with you, the words you used when you said that stuck with, with me. And I have shared that at every retreat yeah. since is the reality is that's a cop out. That's right. And I was like, Ooh. That steps on some toes right, right there, it does, yeah. but, but it's a cop out. It's saying, you know what? I want to stay in selfishness. I want what I want more than I want to know what God wants. Right. And so this is a whole different beast that agreeing to disagree is really a big deal. Yeah, it really That's, is. Uh, yeah. And so uh, I made that statement and this lady says, um, look, uh, I I completely don't accept that because uh, my husband and I, the only way that we can uh, even have a, a decent life together is agree to disagree. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've had a 10-year-old issue that we fought over periodically um, and we never can get anywhere. So we've we've said in order for us to, to uh, exist together, we agree to disagree. Mm. Uh, and I and I, my only comment was exactly what I what you just said. I said, well, that's a that's a cop out. Um, and that's she a said, hard thing to hear. <laughs> and she said, no. She said, nope. This is how it's got to be. I said, okay, it's mm-hmm. okay. Uh, so the next day, uh, Sunday, we have our exercise in hearing from God, and so we send people off, uh, and it's amazing uh, process. Uh, so she and this involves cross referencing and starting and letting God speak. So we come back. Mm-hmm. Um, and usually what we do is we go around the room uh, and people start sharing. Here's what God said to me. And then uh, Linda and I, and of course you and Dan do this too. We, right. we help interpret that and say, okay, mm-hmm. uh, you, yes, you did receive that. Now let us help you with go a little bit further with that. Uh, well, this lady, uh, and I said, you know, let's start sharing what you got. And I, I turned to the mm-hmm. person on my right and she says, hey, before you do that, uh, I got a statement to make. You know what? She said, you can't hear from God. Mm. Uh, God is not that personal, uh, and uh, it isn't so. What what you're saying mm. isn't so. And I said, okay, I appreciate your opinion. I asked her. I said, did you do the exercise? Uh, and she said, yeah. I said, okay. Well, let's just wait until we come around to you, and then we'll see what what happened. Um, and she said, okay. So the group starts sharing, uh, and there, of course, they're hearing these wonderful things from God. And mm-hmm. uh, wow, God said this, and I see this, and how cool is this? And and man, I can hardly wait to go further with this. So she's about the f- uh, fifth couple, um, and she says, "Well, I got nothing." Um, I said, "Okay." Um, I said, "Did you do the exercise?" You know, she said, "Yeah." I said, "Well, read us the verses." that you out loud, read the verses out mm-hmm. loud of what you got. She said, okay. So she starts reading verse one. She reads verse two. And then she reads verse three and she starts crying mm-hmm. and bawling. Um, and she says, oh my gosh, that's the answer to our 10 year old problem. 
Oh, wow. And he, she, she turns to her husband, do you see that? And he says, yeah, I see mm -hmm. that. <laughs> That's the answer to our 10 year old problem. Wow. And then she just wept and she, and then she just broke down and she cried and she shared and she said, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. <laughs> Mm -hmm. that I was so skeptical and so stubborn and so mm -hmm. prideful and God broke through that and, oh. and we are going to be released from this issue now going forward oh. because there's the answer uh, and they got freedom from it and then they learn to abide and they teach, <laughs> they teach they've taught abiding uh, That's to, excellent. to other, other people <laughs> you know? and, and what you're saying is uh, so fantastic that um See, God's heart is, mm -hmm. if you will allow me, uh, yeah. I'll speak to you, and then I'll start to show you, uh, you know, thing after thing after thing, uh, step by step, not to learn about it, but uh, as you've used that word, know it, mm -hmm. experience it, live it, have it, because uh, once you do, you'll now yeah. have that transformation or that promise that was fulfilled in you or around you or even circumstances taken care of. The fruit, which is what we've talked right. about, you know, the fruit that God gives. So uh, it's pretty exciting. Kathy and I, uh, uh, with Dan and Linda and then our other 22 mm -hmm. leaders, uh, the excitement all the time right. is, <laughs> yeah, and, and we're always amazed ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like, God, how do you do that? Right. How do you do time that? Time and time again, it you know, never fails. It never fails. And, <laughs> and do, it never gets old, honestly. How do you speak to them personally <laughs> mm -hmm. that leads them into this beautiful life? Uh, mm -hmm. And what we do is encourage people uh, for their groups, uh, stay at least 20 minutes a day in the Word, uh, stay where you are, right. camp out where you are for 30 days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you do it faithfully for 30 days because of what God is up to and doing and, and uh, occurring in your life, at the end of that 30 days, you're so excited. That's mm -hmm. when you, you'll say, you know what, I'll never stop doing this. Not because it's, uh, I'm going to keep up the duty of it. It's the joy of it. Right. And it, it is that relationship. It's the most fulfilling relationship you'll have in your life. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, well, we're going to continue today and talk through uh, some more of these instructions. Uh, so we've uh, last time we talked about uh, uh, number uh, five, which was go to the Greek and Hebrew. Um, uh, and then the next one uh, is uh, this aspect of memorizing scripture. So go ahead, mm -hmm. go ahead and read that, Kathy, and then we can talk about that. Yeah, it says memorize the verses word for word, carry three by five cards with you. Uh, so it's, um, uh, and it's not a memory, uh, program. So it's not just take a bunch of verses. Cause I know there's systems right. where well, I'll go memorize scripture. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's what God is abiding with you. Mm -hmm. Uh, the verses that God has for you, uh, in your abiding time. Uh, and one of the best ways to do it is you write out the verses again, remember longhand mm -hmm. on a three by five card and you just carry it with you. Uh, right. Because there's a lot interesting of, of time in your day, uh, in your uh, driving around. You know, you'll be at stoplights, and you know you can mm -hmm. you can process it. Um, and at first, uh, what you're doing is uh, I'm trying to get it so that I don't have to go read it. Mm -hmm. um, I could say it uh, because I've now memorized it. Now you don't fully understand it all, and it doesn't. It hasn't done all of its work yet, but. Uh, now you can talk to God about it all the time. Right. Uh, what does that right. mean? How does that uh, have it? And that word is now getting in you, mm -hmm. and God will start speaking to you uh, because yeah. you've memorized it. Uh, so that. So go ahead. go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just gonna say, um, speaking as a mom of three, yeah. and I promise you, with each child, I had a really, really sharp memory when I was young, <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> But somehow or another with each child, and as my calendar got more full and more things on my mind that I was juggling, my ability to memorize decreased, or at least so I thought. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. it decreased a lot. And so when you were first talking about this, honestly, I remember hearing you guys talk about this at the retreat, and I'm thinking, that is great for a lot of people, but whatever has gone on in my body in the last X number of years... <laughs> my brain doesn't do that anymore. So, so how do I make that practical? 
And your wife shared something that was, I mean, there's lots of little hacks and tools as a teacher. I can tell you things that work, but honestly, as a mom, this was one of my favorite ones. She said she did, and it's proven so effective for me. She said she would take an index card yeah. with the verse on it, and she'd lay it next to her bed. And the last thing before she went to sleep, she would read it. Yeah. And the first thing in the morning when she woke up, and I am here to tell you, there is some power in that because when your mind is not distracted in the middle of the night, literally God would help work that into my memory. And just that focus in those two times, again, this is what he's speaking. Cause again, like you said, this isn't just, you know, making a list of a thousand verses I want to do, but this is something he's speaking. He's working into my soul. So I'm reminding myself of that last thing before I go to sleep and I'm letting him work it in my subconscious, even in the middle of the night and yeah. then waking up and first thing eyes back on, it's like, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Yes. It's that posture. I'm going to look and see what it is you're saying to me again right now. And that has been for me in this season of life, still probably the most effective way to scripture to memorize scripture. Yeah. Um, and there's a, uh, Kathy, there's a cool verse, uh, in scripture, uh, it's Psalm 16, seven. Uh, mm -hmm. And what you just described is uh, a really important way to stimulate this verse. And it says this, while you're sleeping, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. Yeah. Uh, because you're, uh, uh, you don't have your consciousness in the way. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there are things that are being spoken, revealed, and given so that uh, as you practice uh, memorizing, praying, speaking your scripture when you go to bed and then when you first wake up. Mm -hmm. In between then, uh, you're going to get insight. And so here's here's what a couple things that happen. Uh, one, and we actually had um, uh, an example of this this weekend at our retreat. Uh, they, they shared this, that um, I was seeking an answer to something. Mm -hmm. uh, and I got woken up at two in the morning. Right. Uh, and this was out of the scripture that I was uh, uh, beginning to process. And God uh, gave me the interpretation mm -hmm. of, of what does this mean for me? Uh, right. Because he, they, he we said, OK, I'm going to wake you up here. And I'm, uh, this thing I've been speaking to you, I'm going to make it conscious to you. So um, it's a beautiful thing that uh, uh, you'll when you can memorize things and can speak it. Uh, now it's able to process mm -hmm. over time because you're not limited anymore to, well, I got to go read it. Because uh, during the right. day, you know, during the day when you're working, et cetera, well, I can't go read it. Um, and other times, uh, you know, you're not fully receiving it, but you're, when you memorize it, it starts that process of mm -hmm. going, of going deeper. Uh, right. And it really matters something. So like when Linda and I, uh, I'll say to Linda, what is God saying to you? Uh, and if she's in something brand new, she's gotten new verses. Uh, mm -hmm. She's gotten a new place to camp out in. Um, she'll say, well, it's in Isaiah 55. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then I'll say, okay, what does it say? And she'll have to say, well, I've just started this. I haven't memorized it yet. I don't have it yet. So right. uh, I'll read it to you so she can read it to me. Okay, great. Um, and my role, by the way, is to how's it going? Uh, did you did you see this? Are you experienced? Are you experiencing it? Are you knowing it? Uh, mm -hmm. Not know about it. Uh, and I'm just her encourager. Um, right. Well, two and weeks. And she to you. And she and she does the same for me. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. okay, Rich. What are you hearing? Uh, here's what mm -hmm. I'm hearing. And where are you? And how are you doing with it? And do you know it? Same questions. Right. Uh, and she's my encourager. Uh, and so uh, we do that together. And we, we, by the way, we do that. And we'll, we'll actually have a, a point here. We'll reemphasize it again. But uh, we do that at least once a week. And we, we right. sometimes will do it more. Uh, but uh, two weeks later, and she's been camping out in these verses. And I can say, what's God saying to you? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'll say, what verse are you in? Why well, I'm in Isaiah 55. She'll speak it to me and won't have to go read it. Right. Uh, and that's when that acceleration happens of God deepening it in her heart mm -hmm. because now she can talk about it all day long. Um, right. And what happens is that the question she's asking and the issue she's processing, God will say something uh, to mm -hmm. her. And by the way, the way he does it uh, is uh, what I call literally a million different ways. So again, it's relationship. <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. So there's no system to it. So somebody else could say something. She could see something. She could observe something. She right. could she could be watching uh, even a TV. She she <laughs> she had one uh, where she's watching an advertisement on TV, mm -hmm. um, and the uh, the words at the bottom were "protect your joy," mm -hmm. and she was in the process of understanding joy, and God said protect your joy. And so she received that as, Hey, you're talking to me. Right. Uh, I'm watching an ad on TV and you're speaking to me. And it's still, yeah. And now she would say, okay, what does that mean? You know, what, what are you talking about there? Now she would go off and talk about uh, further mm -hmm. uh, because God will say something, do something, uh, and you can do it. But because you've memorized it, uh, it's what I call you're on alert. Right. Um, and therefore you're sensitive when he says, well, here, let me add to this. Let me explain right. this. Let me give right. you an answer to that. And because you, you haven't just read it mm -hmm. uh, and it, it hasn't registered yet, is at least you have that inside of you. Yeah. Uh, and well, and one of the so things, cool. yeah, one of the things I like to, to encourage people with is really storing up the word of God within you yeah. gives him vocabulary to speak to you. Yes. You know, and I think so often, you know, when you hear people, well, I just don't hear him. I just don't hear him. And I'm like, get, you know, get in the word, let it get in you so that there's something when you're in that situation, when it's stored up and he can speak that right to you. And you've already, uh, you've already spent time abiding on it. You know what it means. And it's this gentle reminder. This is what I'm doing. Do you see me? Um, but having that stored up, he's able to pull it up right away for you and just speak to you in that moment. And it's a beautiful gift. Right. Um, and it says the Holy Spirit, uh, this is out of John 14. It says one of the, one of the jobs of the Holy Spirit is to bring to remembrance yes. your library that's already there. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, it, first of all, it's, it's it going to be applied to you personally, but mm -hmm. also, uh, you're able to give it away. Right. Uh, so that, and this happens all the time to me, is that somebody says, you know, I'm dealing with this. Uh, well, that's part of my library because I abided in that mm -hmm. seven years ago. Right. Uh, and I, I, I stayed with it until I experienced it. And that word now, that truth, isn't something I know about that I'd have to say, well, let me go research mm -hmm. it for you. It's, um, it's there. Now, I haven't right. spoken that verse or verses maybe literally in seven years. Right. But it's there. Isn't that, isn't that a funny thing though? Because yeah. really, you know, again, I'm, I'm telling on myself here a little bit embarrassingly, but I can walk to the refrigerator and get there and forget what I was going to get. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah. when I'm in conversation with somebody and something comes up and I can have not memorized or even looked at this particular verse in years and the Holy Spirit will bring it up and it is there word for word. And I'm like, where in the world did that come from? You know, but it was something that I had stored up and spent time in. And so it was a part of me and it gave him vocabulary to speak not only to me, but then through me. Yes. Right. That's a beautiful you know? way of putting it. Yeah. Um, one of the other uh, elements of, uh, uh, as you, you know, memorizing scripture, as, as you're letting God speak to you at night, um, one of the aspects of him, and I know you've experienced this in a big, big way, mm -hmm. um, is called dreams. Yeah. Uh, that uh, I'm going to give you a dream because uh, I have a message for you. Right. Uh, and uh, some beautiful things come out of that. Uh, one of the reasons, by the way, it's so an effective way for God to communicate is that um, our consciousness is not mm -hmm. in the way. Right. So we can't shunt it off or, or reject it. Or uh, he says, I can get to you purely because there's nothing to filter it. Uh, nothing so, to filter it and nothing to distract. Nothing to distract. Yeah. And, I, and I give you this dream. Uh, and so he, he uh, shows you. Now, here's what's critical about that. Um, uh, dreams are for, you got to receive your front. You're, you're, you're living in the Holy Spirit. And the dreams are from God. Uh, mm -hmm. Even people that say, I had this nightmare and it must have been from Satan. And as they share it, I say, well, no, uh, uh, it, that was from God. And here's what he's mm -hmm. trying to say to you about it. Not to scare you, but rather to warn you or to mm -hmm. help you understand something. Or he even might be saying, I'm asking you to repent. You're, right. you're going the wrong way. And I'm asking you to repent because if you continue, this is you know what's going to happen. But mm -hmm. 
Um, the key is this. Uh, when you have a dream, uh, you'll wake up. Uh, and it's very vivid mm -hmm. at that moment. You wake right. up at 2 in the morning, 4 in the morning, 5 in the morning. Uh, it's very vivid. And you say, and I, I did this a lot, <laughs> this is so vivid. I'm sure when I, when I, I know I'm going to go right. back to sleep, but when I wake up, <laughs> I'll be able to remember it. And you and you go back to sleep, you wake up and about and the only gone. the only thing you remember is did I have a dream last night? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, what was it about? I don't remember. You know, I've lost it. Um so here's mm -hmm. what you got to do. Uh keep a pad of paper by your bed, a journal or some some way to do it. But when you wake up, write everything down as much detail as you can mm -hmm. uh, everything even about type it. it out on your phone if you keep your phone by your bed yeah. just in your notes section yeah. do a quick yep. a quick something yeah uh, and then don't worry about it uh, go back to sleep uh, and then the next morning uh, get up and, and it'll bring back because you read mm -hmm. it wrote it all down yep oh that's it that was it um, mm -hmm. uh, then your next question uh, is always okay uh, father could you interpret this for me Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, as I've experienced, you know, and there, and you can go to, you can even go to the, you know, online or buy books and people have said, well, this is how you interpret dreams. And this number means this, and this color means this, and this means this, and that means that. And my answer to that is that's ah, baloney, uh, mm -hmm. because you're talking to God who is <laughs> way bigger than a system and, mm -hmm. Uh, what he does and how he says it, and what he presents to you can't be put in a box. Sorry. Right. Uh, uh, it's his relationship to you. And, I, you know, just receive what I'm saying to you. So go to him. Um, and the and the uh, interpretation is always, uh, as I've experienced it, a simple, something fairly simple, fairly straight mm -hmm. up. Uh, a lot of detail. Uh, right. And he does it with uh, things that you know, people that you know, situations that you know, mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily about that person or it's not necessarily right. about that place. It's that represents something. Uh, mm -hmm. And you start to ask, okay, what does that represent? What are you trying to say to me? What's the simple message? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people try to take it too far and say, I'm going to live my life by these dreams. And it's all mm -hmm. the detail, and that means I got to go do, I got to go do. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. Just receive the message. Um, and uh, so you would say, okay, can I help Help me understand it first if mm -hmm. I can? Go to your spouse, see if they can help you understand it. Um, and then if they're still, I'm not a little bit fuzzy about it, is go to other people mm -hmm. uh, who are, have a heart for God. Uh, and they could help understand it. And I, I can get, uh, and that's, you can even, you can even send that to us. And, mm -hmm. um, I, I wouldn't have to know anything about you because I have the same ability you do is to go to God and say, okay, could you help me understand this? Uh, what mm -hmm. are you saying to this person? And Kathy and I do that, uh, back and forth. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it's, here's what I got. Uh, Hey Rich, uh, do you have anything to see additional to that? Mm -hmm. uh, other people do the same thing. I can do that with my spouse. I can do that with others. There's no mystery to it. It's just the ability to keep saying, God, do am I receiving right. this beautiful message that you're giving me, including, mm -hmm. uh, and for me, uh, sometimes it's a challenge. Sometimes it's mm -hmm. a conviction. If you keep going this way, uh, right. you're, you're not going to experience the fullness of what I have for you. And I'm giving you a warning to stop mm -hmm. or to repent or to consider. And I see, I consider that still joy. Right, uh, hey, right. <laughs> fantastic. Uh, I, I receive that. Uh, I never mm -hmm. take it as what's wrong with me. It's mm -hmm. just God trying to guide me into the, into the best. So I love uh, the dreams. I love the interpretation of them mm -hmm. uh, and the fun of it. And I know you've, you've had a lot of experience about yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. That's... Um, it was interesting uh, growing up in the background that I grew up in. Um, I probably did not put a lot of weight in, in the idea that he would speak to me through dreams yeah. until, um, until it really started happening, <laughs> you know, and, um, and as he has done that, I'm telling you, there are things, you know, cause I've sent you a lot of these things, the things that he's spoken to me about that were broad concept, personal concept, all kinds of things. I think back even to one of the, the coolest ones that I had early on that I realized, okay, this is real. This is him speaking. This isn't just, I ate bad pizza. 
you know, <laughs> um, I remember early on having a dream where literally I was, I was in warfare and was feeling as if I was being beaten, you know, that there were physical blows coming mm. at me. And, um, this sweet old lady in my dream came and said, speak his word. And I spoke it and I saw a shield come around me and then the blows kept coming, but they didn't hurt. There was no penetration in it. And I woke up and I knew immediately, you know what? God was just showing me how to wield the weapon that he gave in the sword of truth. He was teaching me this is, you know, when attacks are coming, you can let them hit you and the lies of the enemy, whatever can be spoken and they can do damage or you can take and put a shield by putting the sword of truth out there and say, no, this is what the enemy says, but this is what my God says. And that is a shield around me. And it was a, it was this beautiful truth that then he taught me in a way to begin fortifying myself. And then I took that to, to mean, this is what I need to do. I need to start fortifying myself. And that was part of, I'm, I'm going to memorize more scripture because yeah. I can't wield that sword if I don't know it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, a beautiful. So, uh, we encourage people to uh, pay attention to the dreams. Uh, they're great messages of God, simple mm -hmm. messages of God, uh, beautiful messages of God. And and so, uh, you know, if you need help on that, you could certainly contact us. Uh, and by the way, if you have questions about, you know, uh, what we've been talking about here about uh, abiding uh, and the aspect of memorizing scripture, et cetera, mm -hmm. uh, or about dreams, whatever, uh, you can send in questions. Uh, put it on the YouTube comments section, or you can email us if you're listening to uh, questions, plural, at afjministry.com, mm -hmm. questions at afjministry.com. Uh, and uh, and we don't care how personal it becomes. So mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be a generic, uh, even theology question. It can just be, oh, this is happening in my life. Right. Uh, or how does this work? Or, hey, I had this interesting dream and I don't know what it means. And, mm -hmm. uh, well, send it in and, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll help, uh, help you understand it. Uh, and it's quite, it's quite fun uh, for, mm -hmm. uh, for us to go through that. So we'd love to, to hear your questions. Um, well, Kathy, let's uh, continue. Uh, uh, we talked about uh, uh, memorizing scripture. Um, and now mm -hmm. let's go to, uh, as you journal, uh, and this that would be fun good. to talk about, and we'll probably have to even continue next time. But um, we talked about you're writing the verses out, you're memorizing mm -hmm. them, you're going to the Greek and Hebrew, uh, you're writing, here's what the word says. And, uh, and in your journal, you now start to have a personal process with God, which would be mm -hmm. unique to you. So if you would read uh, number seven is uh, journaling out the process. Right. Yeah. So it says, journal your thoughts. Um, do I believe this in my heart? Is it settled? Why or why not? What do I struggle with? And what experiences in my life work against what I'm receiving in the word? That's an important one. Yeah. Um, how do these words apply to my situation and me? How is God calling me to adjust my life to him and to his will? What thoughts come to me about all this? And dialogue with the Father, your thoughts. Ask for clarity, understanding, wisdom, and faith. Yeah. Uh, so the journaling uh, is uh, now you're writing uh, your, your dialogue with God mm -hmm. uh, day after day after day around the words that you're receiving. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not stuck in, well, I got a problem. I have an issue, you know, solve my problem. And you, mm -hmm. and all you do is talk about woe is me, uh, and that's all you write. Well, no, it's writing as you're abiding. Remember, you're receiving his words. Right. Well, what does God have to say about this? Mm -hmm. And that changes your agenda from, well, here's the problem, and that's all I think about, to, well, um, I, I, I'm trying to receive, understand, and process what you're saying to me. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, it's not denying the issues, uh, and it's not denying the auth authenticity of it. So uh, God wants you to be authentic in the process, but uh, basically write it write it all down as you process mm -hmm. it. So let me make a couple uh, simple statements about it. Um, one uh, is that the journal is between you and God alone. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, Linda has a journal. I've got a journal, and we come and share pieces of that together. Right. But I don't hand her my journal. Mm -hmm. um, 
because that's between me and God. And I've got to have that safety, that that uh, openness to get to the authentic stuff with him. Uh, right. And uh, and therefore, I don't want to get in a position where in, even subconsciously, I'm writing it with a filter. Right. Uh, you don't want to sanitize the I'm conversation. I'm not sanitizing yeah. it because I'm afraid, well, somebody could read this and mm-hmm. find out what I really think. And I really don't want that. So I, so I kind of sanitize it. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and so your journal is yours. Uh, it's not your spouse's. You don't let them read it per se. Uh, we will share stuff out of it because uh, right. there's truth in there that we want to share. But let it be completely yours and realize it's completely yours. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I do save all my journals so that I believe someday when, when I pass on, my kids and grandkids will start reading it. Uh, I'm sure they won't read it all, but they'll read parts of it and say, oh, this is what Opa, I'm a, Linda and I are German. Linda's German, so we're Opa and Oma, German for grandpa and grandma. Um, this is how he processed stuff. This is how he did it. And that, mm-hmm. that would be okay, but I certainly wouldn't hand it to him today. Uh, right. And yeah, I, t- I do tell my kids the most valuable thing in this house, you know, when we do pass on, somebody should fight over my journals. Right, 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 right. <laughs> There's some beautiful stuff in there. Right. And entertainment, right? <laughs> and, and entertaining. <laughs> yes. A little bit of both. <laughs> uh, and so as we're uh, dealing with this journaling, um, uh, as I begin to disciple, particularly executives, um, I'll say, okay, here's, here's what journaling I read them. Number seven. Uh, mm-hmm. Here's what it looks like. You know, start writing your heart out. Um, And I said, now the first week, I'm going to have you do it. And then go ahead and send it to me. I'm not going to do it after that, but I want to see how you do. So they do. And they send it to me. Uh, And basically, it's been written as if they're going to stand up in church and read it. Mm -hmm. Uh, They've completely sanitized it. uh, Right. Because they're they're trying to spiritualize everything and uh, uh, write it from a view of, uh, I'd better look good uh, mm-hmm. in this process. Uh, and so I say, well, that's not your heart. Uh, I said, you you need to go to the depth of your heart and just share what's really uh, your thinking, feeling, and believing mm-hmm. and start processing with God because he needs to take you. And you said it, and this is an interesting statement, by the way. Kathy said last, last yesterday, God meets you where you are. Mm-hmm. And then he starts to move you into his place. Right. Well, here's something that's really critical. You got to be willing to understand where you are mm-hmm. uh, and to deal with that so that he can take you. Because he said, I yeah. can't I can't skip over if you don't go to the authenticity of where you mm-hmm. really are. I can't get you to where I'm going to take you. Right. And I'll give you an example. Um Let's say that you have an, uh, an issue of unforgiveness. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, you know from the scripture, the scripture you're going to be even be led mm-hmm. to, uh, well, forgiveness is critical for you to live the life of God. And so you say, right. okay, I should forgive. Mm-hmm. I should forgive. Okay, I'll forgive. But in your heart, you know you still have uh, a root against that person. You still have, Mm -hmm. I don't want to be in the same room as that person. Um, I want them to get hurt until they're willing to confess what they did to me. Um, I'm holding up a wall. Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, that's the truth, see. And if God says, well, let me give you forgiveness, if you say, well, I already know that I should, I'm fine. And see, God Mm -hmm. says, no. Your heart isn't there yet. Your soul isn't there yet. I've got to give this to you, and you have to recognize it. Yeah. Um, and start with the authenticity of that, yeah. so that you begin to see the freedom. When we say, uh, "Share your thoughts. Share where right. are you with this? Why do you struggle with this?" Right. You don't sanitize anything. You say, "You know, yeah. God, I can't forgive that person." Yeah. Uh, because, 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 and I'm really upset, and this is where I'm at. And by the way, how come you didn't resolve it in the first place? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so you go into the depth of all that. Right. And I think for, for me anyway, sometimes it's backing up even further than that. It's 
truly he knows our hearts better than we do. And so sometimes I know something's wrong and I don't recognize what it is. Yeah. So, so it doesn't even start with me knowing where I'm at. It's me asking him where I'm at yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and him revealing that to me Yeah. Um, because it's really, okay, I can tell something's off. I am not feeling connected to you. So, so what's going on? Something's between us because I know that's not truth. You know, I know, I know you're right here. Therefore, something's going on. Show me what it is that's going on in my heart. Yeah. And, and he, you know, that whole prayer, you'll search me and know my thoughts, test me or search me and know my heart, test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is anything in me that offends you and lead me in the way of the everlasting. That is a powerful prayer. Yes. And there are, are many times when I know something's just a little off and I can't put my thumb on it. And I come right back to, you know what, God, you can, you see my heart. So I'm going to sit quiet before you until you show me what it is. And, yeah. and I wait with a pen and, you know, you tell me what it is that we're, that is going on here. And then let's, let's go and see what you want to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> but uh, it starts there. And think about what you just said there is that, um, I just need to be authentic yeah. uh, and say, I know, I know, uh, I'm, I'm out of sorts or I know mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I'm not quite understanding. Why am I not at peace? Um, right. uh, I'm anxious. I don't, I don't really know. Mm -hmm. Uh, but here's where I'm at. Actually, could yeah. you, could you assist me in yes. taking me to the truth of it? Uh, is there something I'm blocking? Is there something yeah. that I'm not willing to deal with? Uh, mm -hmm. that you're going to show me. And as you just write that all out, what will happen over the next day or so is you'll start to get God's, well, hey, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. um, and then, again, you're paying, you're paying attention to it. You're alert, and you're saying, mm -hmm. oh, oh, it's this. It's about this. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you go process it. Because uh, you're, you're always in a, in a place, and this is where the, the abiding leads us to, uh, and journaling is so critical, uh, is... Um, whenever God gives me some input, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm more than happy to receive it. Not because he's looking at me, what's wrong with me. Right. He's saying, I'm, I'm moving you to freedom. I'm moving mm -hmm. you to joy. I'm moving you to resolve these issues that I will do. And you're going to play a part in that. Um, and together we're going to get you there to the, the beautiful life that I have. And that's right. why, uh, even when you say, I'm not sure what it is, I'm blocking, I know maybe I'm blocking something. And God said, yeah, you, you aren't willing to go deal with this. Mm -hmm. um, let's go deal with it. And, and I, right. know, I know what you've learned is that when that happens, it's like, hallelujah. Yes, uh, sure, yes. absolutely. Because it's going to lead me to the, to the healing, to the beautiful stuff. Right, right. And that conviction, when he speaks something that convicts you, you know, the difference between condemnation and conviction, we've talked about condemnation comes with guilt and shame. Right. Um, and there is yeah. no condemnation for us in Christ. You know, we learned that in Romans 8. Right. But conviction, the beauty of conviction is that it's accompanied by hope. And the reason it's accompanied by hope is that Hebrews 12, he's author and finisher of our faith. So if he is bringing it up, he's going to finish it. He's going to complete it. He's going to walk us through to victory on the other side. So like you said, hallelujah, he showed me something that he wants to set me free from. And that is a hopeful expectation. I'm right. excited to walk into that. Right. Um, and as we've talked about journaling, um, it's, um, it's going through that process that we actually, we described when Jesus was a boy is uh, listen, mm -hmm. ask questions, and then write down what you understand. Uh, right. And so it's, uh, well, here's what I hear you're saying to me. Um, and then you have questions about that. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? What does that mean? How does that work for me? Um, you, you're working, you said you're working on this concept of do loss, servant. Mm -hmm. um, you have lots of questions. Your, oh, jur yeah. your journal is full of questions. Well, what, what do you mean by that? And, and how mm -hmm. does that apply to me? And how has that played out in my life? And what's mm -hmm. the heart of that? Um, and you ask all these questions or you said something uh, we had we had it in our abiding retreat. Um, uh, we made a statement uh, that the world, and we've described this a little bit already, but the world is under the control of the evil one, mm -hmm. and it's in it's called entropy, and it's it's going uh, literally everything's a falling apart, and the enemy is constantly trying to divide, to uh, cause conflict, to separate right. and ruin. Mm 
kill, steal, and destroy. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we made that statement. Uh, and, and this lady said, well, I got a question about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, what? Well, didn't Jesus say he's overcome the world? Uh, and didn't in, in uh, Colossians uh, 2 of 15, he said he's triumphed over Satan. Mm-hmm. So isn't that mean he's disarmed and, and has no, no power? So how does that, how does that work? Mm-hmm. Um, and so I said, well, here, actually, I said to the group, that's a, a, a perfect example of abiding. Right. Because remember, he said, if you abide in my word, you will know the... Mm-hmm. Truth. Truth, and the truth will set you free. So you develop a passion okay. for abiding in truth. Well, mm-hmm. at the surface, it's that these things don't seem to fit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't know how to conclude that. I don't know what that looks like. So, Father, how would you help me understand mm-hmm. these two statements that seem completely opposite of each other? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, there's something I must need to know or I, I miss. I need to know the answer to that question. She would write the question down in her journal, and now she'd go on a journey of uh, help me go places, cross reference, study. Mm-hmm. Uh, she might she might contact me or somebody else and say, right. "Do you have any assistance?" And I know you do this, and I do right. this. Right. Uh, is uh, here's what we don't do. Uh, <laughs> people like she uh, would say, "Well, here's the question." Well, I know the answer to that question. Now, by the way, how do I know the answer to that question? Because I've abided in it. you've already lived through it. Yes. I've, and I don't know about it. I'm not going to mm-hmm. tell her out of, uh, well, I think it means this, because I've read about that. Right. It's, well, you know what? That same question I wrestled with, mm-hmm. and I abided with, and I stayed with it, and I asked God until I got an answer. But here's what I don't do. I know the answer to that question. Mm-hmm. I don't say, well, here's the answer. Um, just accept what, what Rich says. And see, I don't right. say that because my heart is, well, you need to go and process this with God and abide with God because it's a joy for you. And then here's what's really cool, Kathy. It's a joy for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, and I, I keep helping people understand as God says, hey, that's a fantastic question. Mm-hmm. Come with me. And I get the privilege, God speaking, to have right. time with you to reveal things to you that you get to discover and it thrills right. my heart. Uh, right. so, so what I'll do is say, well, um, here's some verses mm-hmm. that you can go process with. Uh, and as you go process them, you then will start to receive. And what I'll do is walk with you mm-hmm. uh, because you should enjoy the journey of that question and God answering that question. Uh, I can give you right. a little bit of help. Mm-hmm. Uh, but go enjoy that that beautiful thing. So your journal, uh, in my journal, has as many questions as anything else mm-hmm. because it's like, well, wait a second. Uh, I'm not sure about that or I've never experienced that or how does that work or wait a minute, that seems contradictory to something else that I know in Scripture. Um, and that's the fun right. Uh, right. Of, of it. And journaling is you got to write it down <laughs> Mm-hmm. And then start recording, okay, what starts to be the answer to that? And what does he say next? And how does he process that next? Right. You got to write it all down. Right. And for me, the journals also provide this place to go back. You know, we've talked a little bit about rhythms and even rhythms and creating margin and things like that. For yeah. me, yeah. I like to have a rhythm of going back to my journals as well, because what I find, um, because life is so busy as a mom of, of, three kids and things going on with our family and everything else. Um, Even when I'm really abiding on something, sometimes I don't necessarily connect the dots. And if I go back and, you know, every couple of months I look back and instead of taking on anything new, I read back through my journals and I'm reminded what he said. And I take notes as to, okay, these were some of the primary things. Lo and behold, I will see him weaving together this whole thing that I didn't even realize necessarily what was spoken in January was going to connect fully to what happened in March, but he has added layers to something that had I not taken time to go back in my journals and had I not written it down to begin with, I would have missed the connection and the fullness. I would have gotten the pieces of it, which was still beautiful, but I, but I wouldn't have gotten how they connected and overlaid each other and made it that much more full. Right. Right. That's beautiful. Uh, well, we're uh, uh, 
Uh, we, we, we're we're going to talk. We run out of time quickly. We're, we? we're, we're going to talk more about <laughs> journaling uh, tomorrow because uh, uh, we're going to continue this and the and the depth of this. But uh, again, if you have uh, questions uh, that you'd like to ask about journaling uh, or things in your life, is mm-hmm. uh, you can put it on on the YouTube comment section, or you can uh, send us an email questions at afjministry.com questions at afjministry.com, uh, and we'll pick it up. Uh, mm-hmm. And we're, we, you know, we'll sometimes we'll just email you back as, as well as put it on the air uh, that, hey, that's a great question. And let us help you understand that uh, more completely. Uh, because, again, that's how we grow together mm-hmm. is um, I'm not quite sure what that looks like. Could you help me with that? Uh, and we want to uh, right, as well right. as, as keep pointing you to learning how to do that with God and the joy mm-hmm. of that. So. We're quite excited uh, about this aspect of journaling. Uh, there's more to, more to come. Uh, mm-hmm. We'll deal we'll deal with this tomorrow. So Kathy is another another great experience of <laughs> uh, of just talking about something simple like journaling. Right, right. Like God is so sweet though the way yeah. He speaks, and yeah. it's fun to be able to share this with people. Yeah, yeah it you really know? is. Uh, so have a great uh, uh, night and a day, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Great. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.